For many years it was thought that electricity and magnetism had no relation with each other. The first existence of this relation between the two was observed by the scientist Hans Christian Oystein. This was a scientist who told us that electricity and magnetism are close, closely related. And this close relationship between electricity and magnetism gave rise to a new branch of science called electromagnetism. In electromagnetism, we will learn the magnetic effects of electricity. When a compass is freely suspended, it remains in the north-south direction. It will always will remain in the north-south direction, the north and south direction. However, if we bring a magnet close to the compass, we find that the compass now deflects. The no longer does the compass remain in the north-south direction, but it deflects from the north-south direction. So whenever a compass needle is not in the north-south direction, is an indication that there is another magnet close to the compass. If you remove the magnet, the compass returns back to its north-south direction. Here's a circuit diagram. There is a resistance R connected to a key and a battery. And in the beginning, we keep the key open. And because the key is open, there is no current flowing to the circuit. And when the compass is kept close to this uh, circuit, it remains in the north-south direction. But however, if I close the circuit, and when you close the circuit, now there will be current flowing to the circuit. Now as current begins to flow through this conductor XY, the needle behaves in a very different manner. It now deflects from the north-south direction. It no longer remains in the north-south direction. Why does this happen? When current flows to XY, there is a magnetic field produced around XY. Because of this magnetic field around XY, this causes the deflection of the magnetic needle. Because earlier we have seen, if a magnetic needle in this case, does not remain in the north-south direction, it's an indication that there is a field in that area. And this is exactly what happens. So we can now conclude that when current is flowing to XY, a, a magnetic field is produced, which brings about the deflection of the compass needle. However, if we open the switch again, the current stops flowing to XY, and the conductor, the compass needle, returns back to its north-south direction. We'll now learn a little more about this magnetic field due to a straight conductor. We have already seen that when a current, when we close the switch, and a current begins to flow through a conductor, a magnetic field is produced around the conductor. As long as there is current, the minute the current stops, when the current stops, the magnetic field no longer exists. So this magnetic field exists only when a current is passing through XY. Let us go ahead and learn a little more in detail about this magnetic field. To learn the nature of this magnetic field, we keep iron filings close to XY. And when these iron filings are kept close to the conductor, and current here now is allowed to flow through this conductor, the iron filings show a very peculiar arrangement. They arrange themselves in these concentric rings around the conductor. Like you can see in this picture, all these iron filings have arranged themselves in these concentric rings around the conductor. So we can say the nature of these rings are concentric rings which center on the conductor. We now learn the magnitude 
and the direction of this field. Since these magnetic field lines are circles, they could have two directions. They could be clockwise, like in this direction, or they could be anticlockwise, going in this direction. How do we decide in which direction is a magnetic field lines? This is given by a rule called right hand thumb rule. To learn the direction of the field, we are given the right hand thumb rule. And the right hand thumb rule goes this way. Imagine you're holding a current carrying conductor in your right hand. Like in this case, this person is holding the conductor in his right hand, such that the thumb points towards the direction of the current. Here is a thumb pointing the direction of the current, so the direction of the current is upwards. Then your fingers will wrap around the conductor in the direction of the magnetic field. Now if you noticed here, see how are the fingers getting wrapped around in this manner. Just like here, have you seen? In anti-clockwise direction. However, if you reverse the direction of the current, now if the current is down like this, downwards, then you see the field lines also reverse. So the field lines are now in the clockwise direction. So if the current is upwards, we find that the field lines are in the anti-clockwise direction. But if the current is downwards, then we find the field lines are in the clockwise direction. Here's yet a picture, another picture to show you the, the direction. So here the current is flowing in this upward direction. And if you see the field lines are in the anti-clockwise direction. They're moving in the anti-clockwise. And in the next figure, the current is flowing downwards. And now the field lines are moving in the clockwise direction. So when current is upwards, the field is anti-clockwise. And when the current in this case is downwards, the field is clockwise. So the direction of the field, of the magnetic field, is decided by the direction of the current. Here's a picture of two circuits which clearly indicate how the direction of the magnetic field depends on the direction of the current. In the first circuit, we have current flowing in this direction because you have the positive, negative, positive, negative and the current always begins to flow from the positive to the negative. And if you notice the magnetic needle is now deflected from the north-south direction. This is the north and the south. It is deflected from the north-south direction and the reason is there is a magnetic field produced around this conductor. But in the next picture, the direction of the field is now reversed. Here you put the switch on the current and uh, the direction of the field is reversed. This is positive, so now the direction of the field will be from positive to the negative. And look up at the magnetic compass. It is now in the opposite direction. This must be because the magnetic field now would have reversed its direction. If the magnetic field here was in this direction, now it would be in the opposite direction. So the direction of the magnetic field due to a straight conductor depends on the direction of current. Thus we see the direction of the magnetic field due to a straight conductor depends on the direction of the current and it is given by right, uh, it's given by 
by the right hand thumb rule. Magnitude of magnetic field due to a straight conductor. We learn on the factors on which the magnetic field depends. The one factor is magnetic field is directly proportional to current, which means if magnetic field, if the current increases, the magnetic field also increases. If the current decreases, the magnetic field also decreases, which means magnetic field is directly proportional to current. Magnetic field is inversely proportional to the distance of the point from the conductor. To explain this, let me take two points. And the two points here are P and Q. The P is closer to the conductor, while Q is further away from the conductor. And as you see here, the lines around P are much more crowded, while the lines around Q are less crowded, which means the field near P here, this field is a, weak, is a stronger field, while this is a weaker field. So every, as we move away from the conductor, as we are moving like this away, away from the conductor, the field gets weaker and weaker. So we can say if the distance increases, the magnetic field decreases. So here if distance increases, the strength of the magnetic field decreases, which means magnetic field is inversely proportional to the distance. And the third factor is magnetic field directly proportional to length of the conductor, which means if the length of the conductor increases, magnetic field also increases. Go over, over it again. Here magnetic field is directly proportional to current, inversely proportional to distance, and directly proportional to the length of the conductor. So magnetic field is directly proportional to current, inversely proportional to distance from conductor, and directly proportional to length of conductor. So the three factors on which uh, the magnetic field depends, directly proportional to current, current increases, magnetic field increases, inversely proportional to distance, which means the distance from the conductor increases, the magnetic field decreases, and directly proportional also to the length of the conductor, longer the conductor, more is a magnetic field. To go over it again, we had three points in which the magnetic field depends. The magnetic field depends on the current, it depends on the distance, and depends on the length. And here, when it comes to uh, current, it's directly proportional, which means when current increases, the magnetic field also increases. If current decreases, magnetic field also decreases. Now when it comes to uh, uh, distance from the conductor, it's inversely proportional, which means when the distance increases, the magnetic field decreases. And the last, length of the conductor, it's directly proportional. When length of the conductor increases, the magnetic field also increases.